Well, it is just absolute chaos, and there are hyenas coming from every direction. There are males, there are females, there's just everybody. I think pretty much the entire clan must be here at the moment. What's been super interesting is watching the reaction of the females to some of the males coming in. The males come in, and they're the ones that have actually stolen the bit of meat from Intima. So they've come in, and, and the females have kind of chased them off. And Ribbon is there now. She's busy kind of feeding as well. And then to our left, there's a whole bunch as well. There's a male here with very dark spots on his back. So he should be quite easy to identify there we go it looks like very dark but i think it's a male anyway they're all so big and full at the moment and it's just chaos it's difficult to actually keep track of who is who in this area but they're just literally appearing out of everywhere at the moment and it's causing a lot of disturbance at the den there's lots of squealing lots of carry on and tima is trying to get into the food and trying to get into all kinds of places and is just being bullied about by everybody really and gwen gave her a bit of a hiding because she came too close to the little ones and you can see more now starting to come in where tima is going down is because there's a whole bunch more starting to come in from that side as well so there they are and there's one behind that even that's also drifting around so so there's lots and lots of commotion and it's really difficult to actually keep track of who's who and where they're all going from where we're sitting we're sitting obviously just by the den and waiting but there's just kind of hyenas arriving in everywhere and there's lots of pasting going on so there we go that's the pasting scent mark that we talk about so they have that little gland that sits just underneath the tail that as they go over grass it secretes a paste that will sit there and they'll then be able to mark their territory there's also a very low ranking male that's kind of on the fringes shame he looks as though he's had a real tough time i don't know where he's gone now but he's got lots of bite marks on him i don't think it's that individual though he is one that looks as though he's had a rough time but there's one individual who's got really serious bite marks all over the face and it seems as though he must be the lowest of the low because he gets chased quicker than everybody else but when he comes around so it's really interesting in the terms of social dynamics Paula you're asking how many hyenas would live in a single den well it depends on on the den itself it depends on the size of the den it depends on the number of factors but generally uh, you won't see too many I mean see there how they just got chased so ribbon is just chasing one of the females is chasing the males go away and then you can see in team is now going up and greeting as well doing that typical hyena side greeting tail or leg up and then they sniff each other and make sure they know who's who but it's just interesting behavior but pull it back to the den it depends on like i say the size of the den most of the times though you won't see too many and in this case this den is only really occupied by gwen and ribbon and their and their cubs so it's got the two young ones that you that we know that are feeding off gwen and then in Timo, who's the one now with her leg up being sniffed and so those are the only three that really live inside the den every now and then you will get a situation like this and and this has been brought about because gwen has dragged a bit of a carcass back into this area it's allowed all of these hyenas to come back with her to this area but they don't actually spend time here for the most part those hyenas will be roaming around and going to other places and lying down during the day but they don't actually spend too much time at the den the most hyenas i've seen at a den that in terms of that are constantly there was on elephant plains which at one stage we had it was nine young ones and of the from the nine young ones there was five adult females so it was 14 of them that used to see at the den pretty much every day so which is a lot but you can see gwen she's up and looking and i wonder if maybe all this commotion might attract another predator you never know maybe lions or wild dogs or leopard or any of those things even other hyenas might hear this and start coming in and you can see gwen is quite alert she's all of a sudden stood up watching around checking just making sure that there's nothing going on nothing untoward that could potentially harm her little ones but isn't she looking good for her? for an old girl she is looking very very sort of healthy and obviously she's well fed because we can see she's very round but other than that her body condition is really good I mean she's 12 years old she doesn't have too much atrophy of her muscles she really does look quite healthy but what's just happened something's just happened look all the hyenas have just run I don't know what's come in maybe there's something that they've just spotted but every single one of them has run the young ones into the mound I wonder maybe these lions have arrived somewhere I don't know but something has just set them off that's for sure I have no idea what just happened 
maybe it's a fact that they've just seen other hyenas and they just kind of got confused between everybody and thought maybe it's another clan I don't know but the instinct is to run away from the den and the reason why they're doing that is because if there's any other predator around you so let's say lions or even other hyenas or wild dogs or anything like that rather take the attention away from the den get away from this area let the young ones go inside they're gonna be very safe and there's gonna be very difficult for something like a lion to actually get in and get towards those cubs and rather take the attention and try and drift and pull everybody away from this area so that's the instinct that they have it might not be anything they might have just got a bit of a fright because I see one is starting to come back now and so maybe it was just a fright that they got and now they'll start coming back and everybody will kind of resettle again but definitely something gave them some sort of a kind of panic and everybody went running the little ones are kind of poking their heads out as if to say what happened to everybody it was absolute chaos here a few seconds ago but you see instinct is to go back down again as one of them approaches now I think Gwen is coming back yeah she's on her way back as well interesting I think also you know at the end of the day there's also a carcass around look at her coming in she's not happy <laughs> she's chasing them off she's basically saying that listen I have worked hard I dragged this a long way for my little ones not for you to eat and that's maybe why she's also having a bit of a also depends on the rank of that individual but it's a male so <laughs> it has to fall in behind him Joshua, you're asking if hyenas will share kills or if it's every man for himself. Well, Joshua, it depends on, on the size of the kill. So if it's something really large and they can all kind of get around, then yes, they do share. But there is definitely a hierarchy system in, in hyena society. It depends on who you were born to. <laughs> you can see now Ribbon's also coming in and chasing. I think it's Ribbon chasing this male away but it depends on hyena society so you've got a situation where you've got matriarchal females and very kind of de clear defined roles within the clan and so as you are developing and as you kind of grow up so you know where you stand and then at a carcass you'll find that the matriarchal females they are the ones that are going to feed first before anybody else and they're going to provide for their cubs before anybody else and then it's so it will go down the list until you get kind of the the lower ranking females and then the males after that the interesting thing is is if a male is born to the matriarch let's say she he will hold quite high status while he's in the clan so he'll still be able to feed with the females but it's going to as he gets older and becomes sort of less seen as a young one of that female so he's going to have to fall down the ranks a little bit so there is a quite a clear defined sort of feeding pattern within them but um it's not you know if it's a big enough carcass then they will share it together as well now i believe chris has got some ids on our hyenas because this is probably one of our experts well biggest experts on the hyenas okay so gwen ribbon obviously we know gwen and ribbon are here and the cubs but apparently heart and june are also here and so they oh and there's just hyenas everywhere literally they are just and comet is also here apparently as well so there's just hyenas everywhere and like i say they just come drifting in and out so it's actually really tough to work out who's who and who's coming in and out all the time it's tough to see and, and you know you kind of have one that comes in and then it disappears and another two come in and go and so i think there's just still the original six around here that we first found walking towards the den but it's just difficult to kind of work it out and you can see gwen is still moving around she's got a bit of a limp on her but that's not stopping her you can see she's still really full and fat and is and as healthy as ever so even though she's got this limp much like shadow and tandy when they had their limbs she's still able to kind of work it out and survive and find the necessary food she, she needs to survive and not only for her to survive but for her little ones to provide milk and to provide food for them as well but you can see they're nervous because and the reason they're nervous is obviously anytime there's a food item around the den and commotion like what we're hearing this morning where there's lots of squeaking and howling this kind of excitedness will attract other predators like i say it can attract other hyenas it can attract lions it can attract big leopards and so you might find a situation where there's that's why they're so on the lookout is because the food is here they know there's also a scent that has been dragged to this area and therefore they need to be kind of aware of what's going on 
It will be interesting though if a clan member from maybe the Elephant Plains clan arrives here out of the blue because it thinks maybe there's a food item going on. Sometimes it can happen that two clans come together and then there will be absolute chaos. Hyenas when they fight are ruthless with other clans. It gets quite nasty and quite violent quite quickly. I know VM has seen a, a sighting where one of the hyenas' ear got ripped off and its foot got crushed and it they really do go after one another so it's going to be interesting to see if any other hyenas do arrive the amount of noise that's been made this morning will have carried quite far and there will have been a lot that would have heard it so see there's another individual just approaching that everybody's kind of watching from the far side at the moment i don't know if it is part of this clan no. so there's a couple of the others and gwen is going in that direction you can see everybody's now running I wonder if it's because she's kind of chasing them a little bit and that's why a lot of the males are moving away but it's just absolute chaos really I don't, <laughs> don't know how to kind of see who is who at the moment it's, it's, they're moving around too much to actually get a kind of fix on spot patterns and every now and then you kind of see them looking behind them and I wonder if maybe something is still moving around in this area Langston and Lily are asking how does the pecking order or how does the sort of ranking system in hyena clans work? Well generally it's according to who you're born to. So if your mother is the matriarch then in the early stages of your life you get fed incredibly well, you don't have to deal with too much competition and therefore you get big and strong and you're able to dominate all of the others and keep that status through your life, particularly if you're a female and you'll in all likelihood then take over as the matriarch once you know the mother goes and, and, and passes on. So that's how it kind of works is it depends on where your mother sits within the clan. Um, in terms of males, males they will ha hold a rank according to their mom for a while. Um, obviously they then sort of start to fall back behind the females as they become adults but if there are new males that arrive because sometimes you will get new males that will arrive in a clan those new males will fall right to the back so they become lower than low if they are new and then they move into this area the older males or the, the males that are part of the clan will then kind of fall on top of them so it's just interesting that it's kind of that's how it works and with regards to females sometimes you will get a breakaway of the females where one female will go away and she'll start a new clan particularly if it's difficult to find food but you can see one of them has come in and is now robbing effectively one of its clan members of food which is pretty insane absolutely ridiculous you can see look at how much power there is in that and there goes the cubs food for a while unless Gwen can come back and steal it back which I don't know if she will be able to because that hyena is off there, she, there comes another one very very cool It's actually sometimes great when you had hyenas just to stop and listen and here comes another one but you can see how even amongst those individuals there's a pecking order so the original one that stole it and ran away has now been chased off and is not actually at that piece of food there's two others that have come in everybody is just chasing everybody at this stage and it's amazing how they're all full as well it's not like they all need this food but they're chasing one another over a cock a little bit of skin basically and a bit of a bone and that's all now it's going to be interesting if Gwen comes in and chases them because she's coming from the left now and I wonder if she might chase them off and grab it and then try and take it back again towards the den no I think she's decided she's going to leave it there goes in Timo bouncing off into the distance as well and Timo seems to always be in the thick of it, and running around like an absolute hooligan trying to find what's going on. Donald, you're asking if hyenas are associated with still associated with 
African witchcraft and spirits. Well, Donald, I mean, it depends, I think, on, on which culture you're talking about. You know, Africa has got a number of different cultures and they all believe different things about, you know, hyenas or any animal, really. There's, there's not the same belief that runs through the whole of Africa. Um, at the end of the day, it's a very large continent and, and hyenas are quite widely spread through that. So it depends on what culture we're talking about. Here in this particular area that we're in, the Shangan people, not so much. They don't really have two, I mean, there are one or two beliefs about them, but it's not it's it's kind of died out a little bit it's no longer the way it was back in the past where you know you used to have a situation where people were a lot more cultural in what they are now the western world is almost kind of taken away a lot of those things and so i haven't heard too much from you know speaking to the trackers and, and things like that they don't have too many beliefs about these hyenas in this particular area as to other parts of africa well there could be i mean i know that in ethiopia and nigeria and places like that there are some beliefs about hyenas and 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 their spirits and 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 those kind of things but now, I don't know the exact details, to be honest. I haven't spent time in those areas and actually speak to those people that live around them and, and have those beliefs. And so in this area and the area that I've worked in, it's, it's really not too much is said about them. They don't really have too many worries or sort of stories or anything like that. So Maybe back in the day, but a lot of that has been lost, unfortunately, as westernization has taken place. Right. But it seems as though things are slowly starting to die down at the den. The, the little ones are in there, not out anymore. Everybody is starting to drift away a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is probably carry on. And I want to just backtrack these hyenas and just check if maybe something isn't following in behind them that's causing them to be a little bit on the panicky side. Maybe those male lions are somewhere around as well. So while I do that, let's go back all the way to the Masai Mara to Brent Leo Smith so he can show you his shubal because I don't think he's had time to do that and well he's also apparently near the Mara River and I'm sure lots is going on that side. Just having one lucky morning with those hyenas and an incredible interaction so that's always awesome to see the sounds around hyena dens are incredible.